Greetings and welcome to another video. In this one I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to build your very own MDSR combination lock. In case you're wondering what MDSR stands for, it's multi-door self-resetting. Exciting. Um, but I'm going to show you how to build one basically from scratch. I say basically because as you can see behind me there, I have put down the buttons, the numbers and some lights and just wired the buttons up to some power over there just a battery and a solar panel so but that's all the wiring I have put in I haven't added anything else in yet so I'm going to show you how to build that from scratch so without any further waiting let's get started now I am going to do this in the build camera because it's a little bit easier if you want to know how to get to your build camera then read the bottom of your screen so first thing I need what I need I need a wall give me a wall so we'll put in two walls behind here and then we're going to build basically what I call some double adapters which is pretty much just two automatic switches positioned like so down a bit more roughly like that and that's a double adapter one input two outputs and we need to build 10 of those so we'll just chuck down 10 quickly like so oops up a bit more there and you can position these however you like but you do need to have this sort of setup where you've got two and because the wall is wider than it is higher I'm going to put zero over here just off to the side like that so that's our first bit of setting up that we do now I'm just going to get some wire and run power over here just down to the wall out there now the power gets connected to that plug there and you need to connect all of them up like that Click. And I think that's all of them. Looks like all of them. Yes. Right, now that's the first step to building your MDSR. So you need to set it up like this. As you can see, some of my switches don't have the connectors showing. I don't know why, but I've got a wee little bug where it does that. So just ignore that. They are connected, but I don't know what's going on. Anyway, I can't fix it. I'm not that fast. It doesn't make any big difference. It's just annoying. The next thing we'll put down is, because I'm going to make this a four digit combination, we need four automatic switches here laid out yeah, roughly like so we then go up the top here and we need to put in two more automatic switches now we can actually put these in like that as well but these will be connected up slightly differently however I'm not going to do that because I just don't like the way it looks so instead I'm going to put four like so and then I'm going to wire some wires across them like that and then get another automatic switch face it that way and oh 
Yeah, you can face that way actually, because it's more aesthetically pleasing. And this also helps because the connectors will show when you're putting it down so you can line it up however neatly you would like. So you put those down, you then run some wires like this, forming little kind of arrows. You then need an inverter which we'll put here like so and that gets wired to the power on one side and the next thing we do is we need to connect all of the outputs from these to one of these so the top of this one I use the top because I like using the top it doesn't matter you can use the top or the side but I use the top so connect all of them up to one of those making sure you're taking the same connection from each one and obviously I'm going to go through this relatively quickly but you can pause the video at any time and go back and watch something anytime you like now that should be all of them I think looks like all of them yes I think we're good then you just run a wire across each of the bottom of these connecting them all across the bottom together okay like that then you need to get power again and connect it to one side of the first one but only the first one I usually go to the right because the left side we then connect to here. We then take the top output and plug it into the next automatic switch and then take this one and plug it into that one. Then the top goes into the next one, the side into that one, the top into this one and that one into that one. We then take the top of that output and connect it to the trigger of that inverter and that inverter then gets connected to all of the bottom ones. You can just connect all of the bottom ones there together like so. So you should have something that looks roughly like that now. Okay, oops. So just all the ones wired together, all of them connected there, then all the ones wired across the bottom. So what we've basically got there is our double adapters connected to a counter at the top with a delay. So that automatic switch at the top creates a short delay before it sends a pulse through. Well, it doesn't send a pulse, sorry, it sends the signal through. That's very important. The next thing we'll do is we'll connect all of our switches up. So as I said, zero down the bottom here, I made this one and these get connected into the middle so into the middle there and this is number one so we plug that into one then we get two and we plug that into two there and three plug into three this is six so that one goes into there and then we take five and we plug it onto there and four plug it onto there. As you can see there's lots of circles showing up so you do need to be careful with your wiring. And seven, uh, where am I? Yeah, plugs into seven. And we have eight, so we plug that into eight. And last but not least, nine. Like so. And now is actually a good time to run a quick twet, test, twist. Better twist it before you go any further. So, if you've done all this correctly, what should happen now is if we push one digit, one of those lights up. Doesn't matter which digit you push, but it should light up the next one. So if I push eight, lights up the next one. If I push nine, lights up the last one, and then resets. 
ready to go again. And it doesn't hurt to just run through each of the numbers and make sure everyone does what it's supposed to because that way you can double check your wiring and if something goes wrong with one of the numbers you can fix it before you get any more complicated than what you've got there. <coughs> Excuse me. And hence the reason I've created a little dome for myself. You don't need to put this in an enclosure, you can just build it anywhere. Also I am building in creative but it does work in survival or any other mode you like. Um, I built my original one in um, survival so I know it does work and this is actually a version 2. The original version had one of these walls for every digit. So you'd need to build 10 of these um, repeatedly for any amount of digits that you wanted. So if you wanted a four digit code you'd need four of those in order to get it to function correctly. And again you'd need wires running from each one to each one. It's basically, not basically, literally a repeat of that. And then I had a system which would trigger and send it to the next one and to the next one. But this is much more compact because that's actually finished there. That's a number pad wired up, ready to roll. Now I'm not going to wire in the lights just yet because you don't actually have to have the lights. They're not required. They're just there because I want to have lights. And also it makes it a bit easier if something distracts you halfway through entering the code, you know which number you were up to and whether it didn't work or whether it did. So we'll wire those up at the end, but if you don't want lights, you can skip the last bit. So, the next thing we need is our door code. So we're going to put down another wall here. And I'm also going to put a half wall here. You don't have to use a half wall, but I'm going to. And I'll show you why in a moment. So, this is where you connect your door. So, I would recommend putting this close to the door, hidden somewhere, so you can't really see it, but it's there nonetheless. Now, the first thing we do is we need an inverter, and we'll face that inverter that way, down the bottom. We then need another inverter, about here, in the middle. And you can make this a bit smaller and compact if you want to. I'm just going to spread it out a little bit for visibility. So what I'm going to do now is put an automatic switch in. I'm going to make these a little more compact because it's sort of easier. So I'll put one there and then I'm going to put one of these facing that way about here and then I'm going to put another one here, like so. And then I'm going to repeat that process once more. So one of these, and then, oh, they all face the same way. Why am I rotating? One of these there, and one of these about there. Now, we're going to get some more power. So we run a wire however you'd like, but run it across and plug it into that inverter. That inverter then connects to here and the top of this inverter then connects to the bottom of all of those, like so. Yes. We then also need to run a wire from the top of that one to the side of that one and from the top of that one to the side of that one, like that, and from there to there, and from there to there. So you have a little setup that looks a bit like that. We then need one more automatic switch in the middle. Probably better if you use an automatic switch than an inverter. And you can go as low as you like, but just make sure it's not going to connect to anything else, like so. And then we plug the top of that one into the side of there and the top of that one into the bottom of there. 
So basically what we've done there is now when we get an input and we need four inputs, it will send a signal through and give you one output. That's pretty much all that does. And now I'm just going to double check my diagram I have to make sure I get this right. Yes. So, the next thing we need is another inverter and we'll put that well, probably about here somewhere like so and while we've got the inverters we're just going to put two more in back to back here now they can be as close as you like as long as they go down but we'll just sit them like so we then need another automatic switch over here and this tells the door that it has been triggered this one and then we put that there we then also run power across and connect it to the bottom of that automatic switch and a wire across the top of there. We then plug another wire across the inverter like so and connect that to the automatic switch. <coughs> the next step we do is we plug that side of the inverter into there and that inverter just stops feedback coming through to make sure once that's triggered you won't get power running backwards, which we don't want. And the next step is we connect the top of this one to the second inverter here on the right, like so. And we connect probably the bottom of that one because it's easier. Just that wire there must be connected to the trigger on this inverter here. We then also run power which can be a direct line so don't don't get it from that side of the inverter we want to get it from this side up to the bottom of that inverter and we connect the top of that inverter to the trigger on this side and then we connect the bottom of this inverter to the trigger of that inverter like so. So now you've got wiring that looks like that. And that is basically our door setup. The one last thing we need to do is take a wire from this inverter and run it all the way back to the reset on this inverter up here. So it needs to connect to that trigger up there. So obviously you might want to wire it a little nicer, put it through some stuff first, but essentially it just needs to connect to that trigger on that inverter. And that will reset the door once four digits have been entered, whether the code was correct or not. So that way, if you have a door which has a number th which you have multiple doors which has number three as the first, second, third or fourth digit. If one of those gets triggered it will still be reset once four digits have been entered. That's important. So, <coughs> that's that so far. Now, mm, I might actually shift that wall just because that wire is running through it. So I'm just going to put it a bit further away over here. Like I said, you could do this nicer than what I'm currently doing, but this is for demonstration purposes only. Now, we need... Um, yes, four inverters here, like so. So one, two, three and four. We also need three automatic switches below. One, two, three. And this is for every door that you wire up. Now the wiring on these is the side to the top and again side to top, side to top, side to top the automatic switch to the bottom of the inverter 
and we do the same for all of those we also wire the top of the inverter or the side it doesn't matter but one of those two connections to the trigger on the next automatic switch and we do that for all of those like so and this is the little setup which makes sure that codes have to be entered in the correct order so if you have a code one two three four without this little setup if anyone enters four three two one it would still activate but this setup makes sure it requires one two three four which I will demonstrate shortly now the next step we do is we connect the top of this now because that's on the left I'm going to go from left to right on each one so we connect that to the top of this bottom automatic switch here like so and then we connect the top of that automatic switch to the top of that inverter and the top of that inverter to the top of the next automatic switch and the top of the next automatic switch to the last inverter like that what we do next is we connect the first inverter to the first digit so I'm going to make this code one two three four so I'm just going to run it to the ground doesn't have to be run to the ground but I'm going to to number one and this is what the left output on this double adapter is for so one and I'm going to make the next one two which we then plug into the bottom of the automatic switch and we do the same for the next one this is going to be three so we plug it into three like so and then we get four and plug it into the bottom of the next automatic switch like so and that's that what I will do over here quickly where am I technology I'm just gonna put a light box down that'll do and connect it to the output on that automatic switch so like I said that automatic switch there is what tells the door to open or the light to turn on or whatever it is that you're connecting to that's how that works these inverters are what allow you to reset it entering the same code again if you wanted to reset with a switch what you can simply do is interrupt this one here so that last bit of power that comes to there we could put in oops very power power switches we could put in a wall switch like so and then if we wire that up to the bottom of that one that would allow you to turn it off with that switch so let's just test that and see if that works if I enter a one as you can see there we got a light on that one and then I enter two and then three and then four and on comes the light box and then if I enter the code again one two three four the light box turns off so the door would close but like I said if you added that switch in to the end you could once you've entered the code and it activates if you wanted to you could add a switch in so you can just turn it off and then back on and that would turn this light box off close the door whatever it is that you wanted to do quick edit there because I forgot to mention a couple of quick important notes um, before I put the lights on um, obviously if you wanted to swap the output you could just put an inverter down um, wherever and then connect that to the trigger and if we supply that with power from our mains like so and then I can just put down another light box 
put it on top. And get some wire. And then plug that into the inverter. So now we have... So if you wanted to have the door closed when the door code's not on, you can just plug that in like so. And now when you enter the code, obviously, it's going to swap the light boxes over. Um, I mean, as you can see, there is a slight delay between the two because of that inverter. Um, and the same works with the switch. But that's how you can get a door to close when the thing is turned off. Um, the other thing of import is, I believe there's a limit to how many wires you can connect to a single point. Yeah, you see, I can't connect any more wires there. Um, so, you can only connect a certain number of doors to this setup. But, you can get around that and sort of double the amount of doors, I believe. I believe it doubles by putting another automatic switch in, like that. So plug an automatic switch in there, and then just connect the top of that to power. You just take it from there and run it across. And that should increase the amount of connections you can have there, I believe. Um, if not, you could simply build another section of wall like that and just plug them all in together um, basically the same way I've done here but you wouldn't need to build another counter at the top just another one of those and then connect your new set of doors to that and the buttons to the same connections there along with power and then run the top of those over to these counters perhaps onto the next one or something like that. You could even just join the top of those all together and then run one wire across like that. So that can fix that problem. Now I'll show you how to wire up the lights. That's not too complicated. So to connect the bottom lights up you just plug from there. So that middle, middle one there we can go from the side, but basically that little top wire and plug that straight into those like so take that one, plug it into there, take that one and plug it into there now to get the green and red lights working what you do is you take one connect, you need this wire at the top here so the one that comes out from that automatic switch so we can take it from here Probably the easiest for my setup but you could take it from any point along that wire and just run it up and we're just going to sit it there for a moment and then we need a power inverter up here face it that way and an automatic switch like so and then we connect that wire to the top and to the side and then the bottom of that automatic switch goes to the green light and the top of that switch goes to the power inverter so the top, the same wire coming across needs to run straight across to the inverter and the bottom of it, automatic switch goes to the green light then we take from our reset over here again the little trigger from that inverter and we plug that into the top of that inverter and we take the bottom and plug it into the red light like so and so now if we enter in an incorrect code we get a red light come on and that's that and if we enter the correct code We get a green light to come on, just like so. And that's all you need to do to wire the lights up. So that's basically it.
that is a multi door self resetting combination lock. Um, just in case for anyone who doesn't know, you can only have 10 buttons in any given base. So this does use up all your buttons, which means you do need to use switches from now on because it just won't let you build any more buttons. Limit to 10 per base. So without mods to change that, you can only have 10 buttons. Why are they limited it to 10? I'm not really sure. But there you have it. You could, if you want to, just make this a uh, you know four or whatever buttons, and then just limit the amount of things you've done here. Have it set up exactly the same way, but yeah, if you've only got four, just put four of those in. If you've got six, put six of those in, and then however many digits you want at the top. And that's how you build that. Your very own MDSR combo lock. So yes, any questions or any problems, um, feel free to leave a comment in the below, and I'll try to answer. Like I said, this is a version 2, which is slightly more compact, especially on that side. It does add in those little section, though. But it's not terribly hard to build. It's just a fair bit of wiring and stuff to put in. Um, I'm not sure how well this would work with complicated bases whether or not all this circuitry would slow things down too much I wouldn't think so but nonetheless there you have it thank you for watching hope you enjoyed have fun and we'll see you out there